and then it comes off next week, so good to go from next week. How much of a relief is it to be available? And you know, obviously, it's never great to have a bit of a concern, is it? But you must be you must be delighted that you, you know you're back in time and good to get ready to go. Yeah, of course. Uh, when you when you get injured so close to well, at the time it was the European Games were at the forefront of my mind, and then and then obviously when you figure out you're not going to be out playing them. The Six Nations then, but uh, from from early doors, even just the next day, the the surgeon and the doctor were they were fine. They just said it's a it's probably the best injury to have in your face. Um, so that was that was nice to know. <laughs> <laughs> if you could pick one bone, you pick that one. Yeah, hi. Can can I ask you both really? Uh, the focus in the short term is the Six Nations, but this is a, a World Cup year. From a coach's perspective how, and a player's perspective, how do you marry those, those two huge ambitions and goals in, in a year like this? Uh, pretty easily. Um, you focus what's in front of you. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we meet up tomorrow as a squad for the first time, so um, the focus will be nothing but on ourselves and, and getting ready for the Welsh game. And then, you know, obviously it's, it's about progression, isn't it? Uh, being honest with yourself and making sure that you, there's a realisation of where, of where you need to take your, your, your game to. Uh, I think we've got a pretty hungry group to, to be able to do that. Andy, um, obviously Warren coming back to Wales, the guy you know. Who? <laughs> Does he make them a very different beast immediately, or you know, what's your take on that? Well, obviously, um, all the hype is is uh, is certainly warranted. Per on the pun, but he um, he's uh, he's he's obviously a serial winner, certainly in this competition, and uh, he'll certainly bring that. Uh, to his squad and he'll have them ready um, you know um, Cardiff's always been a, a difficult hunting ground for us um, and, and rightly so it's one of the hardest places in world rugby to go to so it really doesn't matter who's in charge or, or, or what type of team they put out there we all know what uh, playing at home mean, means to the Welsh so therefore it's a massive task for us first up but we pride ourselves to try and get up to speed as soon as we possibly can and be at our best when it, when it matters so hopefully the occasion, the game will bring the best out in us. Andy, I think you've spoken publicly before about embracing being world number one. Um, what does that look like? Does that look any different day to day and in the messages? It you're means grabbing all of it players? and bringing it in like this. Um, you know, it's just a bit of realisation where you're at. Again, you know, to, 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 to improve on, on, on what you're about and what you're trying to achieve. So, um, yeah, I mean... That's where you want to be. We, we we want to be tested as much as we possibly can, and and obviously um, if you if you're up there um, and playing some decent rugby, then people are trying to uh, chase you down, etc. You know, so that's a, a different type of test for us, but it's something that we we, we want. Uh, it's something that we're going to cherish and and, uh, and get after it more. Hello, uh, one question for Johnny. Uh, Johnny, could you talk uh, about uh, Josh van der Fleer as a player and as a guy? Could you describe uh, what kind of uh, guy and player it is? Josh, yeah, he's, uh, first of all, as a, as, a, as a fella, he's the most humble, uh, most humble, hardworking lad you'll ever meet. Um, he's obviously taken his game to a level, you know, obviously, for the player, the player of the, the year and um, he's been outstanding for us and he has showed no signs of, of letting up. He's he started the year really well. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna need him in, in this campaign. You know, he's he's been fantastic for us over the, the last eighteen months since since he's got his big break. Morning Andy. Hi. Hi. Um, quite a few people were surprised by Joey being left out of the squad. Could you just explain that decision and maybe uh, tell us how he how he reacted. To uh, yeah, and I understand it because it's not as though he's been playing uh, poorly. His, his form's been um, uh, pretty good, as in he played pretty well uh, yesterday. Um, 
but there's a there's there's been a bit of feedback like we would do with with a lot of players who, who, who didn't make the squad and Joey understands that and you know there's a there's another guy there Ross Byrne who's been getting feedback for the last couple of years and and couldn't get into the room and he's improved out of sight really on the things that we've been uh, asking of him and um, so he he gets the chance to see whether that can convert to the international stage and we know that's a, a different level but he's earned the right to be able to do that and and 100 percent that Joey will be working away hard to to um, to get back in and um, and then we've got Jack Crowley there who's but uh, got a lot of potential going forward, so we need to put a bit of time into him as well. A, a, a little, a little bit of that, a little bit of both. Everyone has some improvement in them, you know. Um, you know, Johnny's uh, top of the tree, obviously, as far as his career is concerned, etc. But he'd be the first to tell you that he's, he's he's got things to work on. So everyone has, but at the same time, it's a great place for us to be that we've got a bit of depth. Uh, got a bit of competition and people fighting to, 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 to want to um, be part of this Irish squad is where we want to be. A question from the, what do you think about France? They beat you uh, two times? Uh, time. We know, we know that, yeah. yeah. You know, with their, their, um, they're a fantastic side. They, they found different ways to um, deal with the, the pressures of international rugby and they can play the game in all sorts of, of, of different ways and um, you know they, they obviously um, thoroughly deserved the, the championship last year and the, the way that they went about their autumn as well showed that they can roll with the punches as a side you know and find a way to win um, so obviously you know the, the season that they had last year and, and not losing the game makes them very dangerous uh, coming into this competition. Hi guys, you're both very experienced in, in rugby. I just wondered what you've made of the Six Nations Netflix uh, that's coming. Is, some, is something new this year? Do you think it's important for the game to do that? And are you sort of open to it behind the scenes? Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're delighted. Um, no, I think, you know, it would be, uh, I think it'd be good for the game. Um, give people an insight into what it's like, you know, in our environment. Um, I think you get a lot of that anyway with, you know, the, the social media guys that follow us around. And, um, but it'd be good for the, I suppose, global audience and uh, hopefully it'll bring some more fans, some, some more revenues, some more sponsorship, all those type of things. So it'd be good for the game. Quick question for both of you, just on the um, RFU's introduction of the, the new laws on on waist height tackling from next season. Do you think that can be enforced practically? Do you think that's good for the community game? Would you be in favour of similar laws being introduced in Ireland? Well, you, you you're, know, you, you're very opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I, look, I don't agree with it. Um, there's no point sitting on the fence, really, is there? Um, I just think that you've you've got tall people that play the game. It should be their decision to how they, they tackle. Of course, we need to get the the headshots out of the game. Um, but I think the, the tackles that we really need to take out of the game are the reckless, out of control, sprinting out of the line, uh, tucking arms, all these type ones. You know, hitting someone there, I don't think is a... It should be an option. Um, and it's not like you can't get concussed chopping someone's knees, you know... I, I see a hell of a lot of concussions, people getting their head on the wrong side and a knee to the temple or a hip even uh, to the side of the head. Um, so strongly disagree. I think, I think it's super important that um, what, has to be, what has to come with that is the, is the correct coaching, the correct way, the correct technique because of the reasons that Johnny just said, you know. Um, if you're just saying to a kid that you need to tackle lower, then you become even more vulnerable, in my my opinion. You know, if you're just sitting there with your arms in front, you know, trying to wrap and and um, with your head down, etc. You know, you're 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 a sitting duck, waiting to happen. So, the coaching and the technique of how how it's applied to um, tackling below the le tackling below the waist is absolutely crucial. Otherwise, we're going to have a serious problem.